I'm usually the only guy on tour that's putting their old broken boards back in their bag and taking them home. Everyone thinks I'm a weirdo, but they're probably right. Yeah, I feel kind of bad like when kids at demos ask me for like my old board. I always have to explain to them. I would, but back in 1988, when I was a kid, I started saving all my boards. And it all starts right down here. This is board number one. I got Christmas 1988. Steve Caballero, Powell Peralta. I'm pretty psyched because I got Steve to sign this for me. This was a real fun era here. This was all the late 80s. Uh, per Wellander. Powell Peralta. Graphics got all messed up. I started to make my own graphics. I like to draw on the grip tape. All kinds of fun things on there. Rip grip. Kids may not know about that, but it always helped when I when I bomb dropped on the handrails. Just gave me good good grip right there. Got my Tony Hawk. I saved up a lot of lunch money to buy this one. Nice grip tape job there. I used to uh, write it on there with chalk and then use my mom's hairspray and hairspray over it so the chalk would stick onto the grip tape. Minor threat. I finally broke away from Powell Peralta and I, when World Industry started and I got Mike Vallely here. I have a few Mike Vallely's from back in the day and I got him to sign them for me, so, you know, be friends with these guys now, it's kind of cool. What's cool about this is since I write for a black label now, so this was my first Jeff Grosso black label board. I got this 1991, I think. And then here's my second Jeff Grosso black label board. And then here's my third Jeff Grosso black label board. See, I really like this board. And this board was a marking point in my life. This was um, another black label board and I broke it. And this is the point that uh, I realized I had, to, I had to get a job. So that's when I started mowing lawns. So this whole era here is when I went to California for my second time. I moved to San Francisco. I had no money when I lived there and I broke boards all the time. I used to buy these blank boards and I used to draw my own graphics on them. And that's when I met Ed Templeton. He kind of just started Toy Machine and still had uh, old boards from um, his television days. So he hooked me up with these boards. Definitely for a 19 year old kid that has never met a pro before was really exciting to get. And here's another uh, pivotal moment in my skateboard life. Somewhere right in here is where I actually got sponsored. I was very happy and very excited. All the way down here, these are all in the invisible days. Here's another great moment. This is the first board I got when I got on Black Label right here. Jim Gagne. So from there on out, it's my Black Label amateur days. And uh, move down here. This is when I turned pro. First pro model right here. One more interesting thing started happening in my life. Like when I started traveling places. If I went, you know, here or there, I would write where I went. See? Europe 99, rode this on our, went to Japan. To me, they're just photographs. My slap cover right here. I think I've probably got like at least 250. When I'm an old man, it'll be cool to look at them and remember the old times. <laughs> It's cool, you know, like right now being able to lay all these boards out, it's like memories, man. You look through all these boards and you remember all these times in your life that you don't have photos for, but I have the boards for. I'm glad I have them, you know. Most guys I know wish they had them. That's about it, man. That's my board collection.